this is something that's extremely interesting. Okay. It's over a week now, but we have to talk about this. We have to talk about Arbor Jack, Jack, I getting sent down to the miners, getting sent down to the Laval Rockets. Okay. I did not expect that at all. I didn't see it coming. I don't think he saw it coming. I don't think anybody saw it coming. I am not totally against this move. I'm being 100% honest with you. I'm not totally against this move. And I'm going to be quite honest with you about something. When Arbor Jacki made the team last year, I was shocked. Because I thought he was going to start the season in Laval. I'll talk about last season. I knew Caden Gooley was going to make the team. I think we're all like, well, Slavkovsky is going to make the team first overall pick. I had, I did not expect Arbor Jacki to make the team right away. I thought he was going to start his rookie season in Laval, and then he'd be a call-up later. And then it was Justin Barron that got sent down. I thought Justin Barron would have made the team. I'm okay with Arbor Jacki getting sent down to Laval. But I still kind of wish he was on the team, especially after that Buffalo game where things got a little bit fucking dirty. You talked about, we talked about Yuri Slavkovsky dropping the gloves. That would have never happened under Arbor Jack Eye's watch. No. Never. They took a run at Caulfield, I think, at one point. They took another run at, at, at uh, Slavkovsky, too, in the middle of the ice. If Arbor Jacka was there, like he'd go threaten these guys, be like, yo, don't, don't, don't fucking don't do anything stupid. Play hockey. Don't run at my fucking guys because I'm gonna come after you. I think some of the teams, I think a team like Buffalo took notice that listen, they don't have their tough guy. Michael Pozzetta wasn't in the lineup either. It's just happy that it's it 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 super happy that it turned out we won in the shootout. Slavkowski, great. But after that game, like I was, I got frustrated. I was like, "This is why you need Arbor Jack with the Montreal Canadiens." Yep. But and, and yeah, oh, I, I, I'm just gonna say one thing because I saw Arbor Jack first game Laval. I actually was there in attendance, and a lot of people were like, oh, he didn't play well." Like, but the mind you, the whole team didn't play well against the Belleville Senators. I thought he did okay. Like, I thought he did like maybe he did one. Did two giveaways that like yeah okay you know don't don't do that just keep your game simple. Apart from that, he did keep the game simple. He was a beast on the penalty kill. He was the only defenseman or the only player on Laval that was clearing the puck. And I think people expected him to be physical. I think people expect him to maybe drop the gloves. The worst thing Arbor Jack I could do is drop the gloves in the minors against some fucking plebeian plug. That's going to try to fight him so he can show that, oh, you know, give me a shot in the big leagues. I'm dropping the glove. Arbor Jacki does not need to fight in Laval. Arbor Jacki does not need to drop the gloves in the minors. That's the worst thing that could happen to him. It's some fucking nobody that's trying to make a name for themselves that could risk some kind of injury to Arbor Jacki. Hell, we kept saying it when he was with the Canadians. He's got to choose his opponents wisely. Don't fucking expect Arbor Jacki to drop the gloves in Laval. He's not there for that. He's there to, one, maybe control his emotions, two, play his game or improve his game a little bit more on the defensive side. And when it came, look, he's got two points in three games. He's doing something right. Yeah. he's You know what I mean? He's on the penalty kill. He's on the power play. He's paired up with Logan Mayu, which I fucking love personally. Yeah. I love those two together. They're, 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 They're two fucking beast of kids playing together. One's more offensive minded, the other one's a little bit more defensive minded. I think it's I I think it's perfect. They're still young though. Like they haven't they're there's they Arbor Jack I did not play a full season yet. He hasn't played over 82 games. At least I don't think he has. I I'll, I'll double check that stat. But they they, they, they gotta play, they gotta be exposed to these games. And I think this is a question I'm gonna ask you because I personally don't think so. But do you think Jaden Schrubel took Jack I's spot right now? I don't think in part. He did. Okay. I think in in part. But I think okay. 
<laughs> so this is that you just, just this, 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 up this, like this, uh, this is this is let just I love just, this like, unzip the heart let's just unzip the heart I love Jack Eye to the point of like if I were to be buying a jersey I would consider him as one of the top options like I love that style of player yeah I love the fighters uh I love six, what he brought to the team six, only 68 NHL games that's still NHL. rookie numbers guys he's yeah. still a rookie Kind of. Yeah. I think I think what bit him in the ass, it, like what bit him in the ass this year, is he wasn't, he was taking too many penalties at the wrong time. I'm not saying, I'm never going to say he wasn't sticking up for players, but last year he was an intimidating factor. Like he had guys fucking really looking over their shoulders and, and, and worrying about going in a one-on-one matchup he had them worrying and he was like i said he was a scary dude would i consider him as scary this year was i would was he as intimidating no no and and if you don't if he's not going to be that and i'm not asking him to be that intimidation factor but he has to be i'm asking he but he ha- like that's what he in like struble yeah he's he's strong he's very strong even but he's not like nobody in that locker room is as tough as Arbor Jacki. Nobody keeps the other team in line as much as Arbor Jacki. But at a certain point, you have to play hockey. If you're getting penalties and you might not have some of the fundamentals, yeah, maybe it's time to go down to the minors and work on some of the fundamentals. Play as many minutes as possible. Play 25, play 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. Get as much as experience as possible. Get those touches on the puck that you're not gonna get as uh, you're not gonna get as much of because you're playing on the second or third pairing of defense. So if and, and it makes sense to me if he's not dropping the gloves and fighting these fucking plugs down in the minors, that's probably Kent Hughes saying, "Look, you are an absolutely essential part of this team. You're going down that. not to fight. You're going down to get all those touches on the puck." You're going mm-hmm. down there to potentially play with your future partner, Logan Mayu. You, yeah, maybe that that maybe, would be a destructive, maybe. murderous maybe. fucking wow. defensive pairing. Maybe. Yeah. I think Mayu. I think Mayu's going to be higher up. But but, but, but like, I, let me not I, let me not get too too distracted on that. Okay. I <laughs> okay. I just think he's going there to work on maybe his his hockey skills. Let, yep. Let's say let's say his his hockey playing skills touches on the puck. Yeah, first I, passes, think, I think I think quickly. yeah, I I I I agree with that, and I think that's what that is. I don't think, but wait, I, wait. I it's because it, it, it came after his injury though. So like, yeah, could this also be a conditioning stint as well? A little bit. It, it could be a con- it could be a conditioning stint. I thought about that too. Maybe he was ordered like, hey, don't fight, don't whatever. Maybe they don't want to expose him to, yeah. Maybe that maybe they're putting him down in the minors to keep his conditioning up. But at the same time, he's you know he's got a few more. I'm telling you right now, you don't have to tell you, but just saying it out loud. You're in the minors. You have maybe a split second. You may have even a full second, a second and a half before you're getting hit. Contrary to when you're up playing up top, you don't have that additional time and you don't have that additional space. So, anyways, that's that. And I, I want to say. Arbor, I'm okay with him being there if it's for developmental purposes and he's not fighting and he's not going crazy. If he has to work on a few things and buy himself some time, perfectly fine. If the Canadians are also trying to showcase some of their other defensemen and that would mean uh, him playing less minutes, again, I'm okay with him going down to Laval. He's also one of the few defensemen that wouldn't have had to pass through waivers. Makes sense there again. Yeah. But, but... Games like we had, you mentioned against the Buffalo Sabers. Mm-hmm. I wanted to fucking drive. I, wa- oh, I wanted I was, to drive I was to Buffalo. Frustrated. And I was getting frustrated, man. Oh yeah, my god. Teach Teach Thompson, who's Teach Thompson, the fake tough guy who got the shit kicked out of him already in the past. <laughs> that motherfucker who's taking oh, runs at you, Caulfield. You, yeah, that too. I know. Yeah, yeah. You want to know what Jack? I would be like, listen. No, I don't give a fuck who you time. are. Don't you? Don't no, you no, touch no. him? You, you touch him one more time. I'm going to fucking reorient your face 
and yeah, you're not with, gonna fucking with, chew with, properly for the with, next weeks. With okay, Mister Jack Eye. Sorry, Mister Jack Eye. But the thing Sorry. is, I I still think even with Jack Eye there, maybe Tate Thompson wouldn't have taken a run at Caulfield, exactly and maybe and, and I, I I I I'm convinced that I'm convinced that to this day, right now, I don't think Slavkowski drops the gloves. I don't think Tate Thompson takes a run at Caulfield. It could, it could, and this is why I like Michael Pozzetta. Michael Pozzetta wasn't in the lineup either. Yeah. I find Michael Pozzetta tough. Maybe not as tough you know as, as Jack Eye, but I think the second toughest guy on the team is probably him. Well, you know what? Mitchell Stevens agreed with that, agreed with Pozzetta being the second toughest guy. And I think that Pozzetta, uh, ver, ver, pa, the express as the expression goes, I rather have Pozzetta in the lineup over fucking Mitchell Stevens. I think. Mitchell Stevens is taking up space and taking up ice time for no good reason. Um, thank you for your service. In the... And it's cruel for me to talk like that because these guys are better hockey players than I'll ever dream of being. And we treat them like shit because they're not one of the 700 best players in the world who are playing in the big league or, or deserve to be playing in the big leagues. But th that, that said, Mitchell Stevens, I'm sorry, bud, but, it's unfortunate. I would take it's, Pizzetta it's, just to keep police. I'd rather have a police officer like Pizzetta. Like dude, a, a, a thousand percent. And I would – look, now that Emil Heineman got called up because of the uh, Tanner Pearson injury, mm -hmm. I would give – this is the lineup I would do right now. Just to have Pizzetta in the lineup, just, just because we're talking about toughness here, I, I would – I would put Jake Evans back at the fourth line. I have Pizzetta there, and you either put, uh, either you keep alone in there, or you get, or you give Himil Himil Heineman, put a Himil Himil Heineman on the on the fourth line. Maybe put uh, maybe give uh, Yessi Olinin a shot on the second line or on the third line or something. Yeah. I, I I I I I don't know, but I want Pizzetta in the lineup because of that toughness factor. I I do too. And and you know what? Thank you so much for bringing up uh, Ilonen's name. That guy, if there's he's one guy hands. who deserves a shot, oh my God, he's got hands. He's he's, he's a got he's hands. A good hockey player. Filthy. He's a good Fil hockey player. Filthy in the shootout too, and that's why he's given that opportunity. I want to go back to the defense though. Jaden Schrubel deserves to stay with the Canadians. He does, without a doubt. And you met you you think Arbor Jack guys could be paired up with Mayu in the future? I don't think so. You want to know who the I, third pairing is going to be? I, I, I'm saying I was this. just before you say it. Before you say it. Yeah. I want to answer because you asked the question. No. Yep. I, I actually now that I think about it, it's going to be like <laughs> Gooley and Gooley and Mayu. I see Gooley uh, and, and probably uh, Hudson and Reinbacker or vice versa. I see, it's, it's, I see it's Hudson. Gonna be, those are going to be your top four. Let's say. This is the lineup of a, of a contending Montreal Canadiens. Now, to this day, I'm still convinced it's going to come down between Mayu and Barron. I don't think you could have both in your lineup. I don't think you could have both within your 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 three pairings because they're similar players. Mayu's bigger. Mayu's supposed to be stronger and a little bit more physical than Barron is. And I like Justin Barron. This is not a knock on Justin Barron. I just think maybe if Mayu progresses like he could be. Maybe he threatens a spot for Baron. Right now, Jaden Schrubel, in my eyes and opinion, he's threatening Jordan Harris's spot. Thank you, thank you for. And I and you know the ironic thing is they were teammates in North at Northeastern University in the NCAA and they won together. That's the most ironic part. But right now, Jaden Schrubel is threatening Jordan Harris's spot. In my opinion. And I love Jordan Harris. I think the only upper hand that Jordan Harris has over Schrubel is that Harris is probably a little bit more of a cerebral defenseman in a sense. I think he's got a bit more of that hockey sense as a defenseman more than Schrubel. But I don't think Schrubel's far behind now. Schrubel definitely has a more physical edge to his game. And I think he's catching up to, to Harris right now. Um, and come play. Go, I, 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 let me ask you this though: Come playoff time, where things get it. rough, you know, it. things get rugged. So this is why I, I'm going to say this. I have to say this. I see a pairing of Jack Eye and Shrubel 
as a third pairing penalty kill if and when the Canadians become playoff contenders? A thousand percent. Uh, and and I, I, I will say something contrary to you. I don't think Logan Mayu threatens. I think he beats the shit out of uh, out of Justin Barron, uh, and Justin he Barron. takes that spot. Hands wh- wh- whenever whenever he's ready, whenever he's ready, that that, that switch is getting made. I I, I ser- and I seriously do think. I keep mentioning this is going to be my trademark on on our show. I I keep saying that our defensemen are going to be the key pieces that are going to lead to getting uh, to getting our acquisitions, especially on the forward side, yeah, when I it's going to so. be time to compete. Jordan Harris and Barron are going to be two defensemen who are worth quite a lot. I'm not I'm not going to say they're worth the first round picks and 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 all this and that, but like I still think. Actually, the the role the the reverse might be uh, might be true, but I think these young defensemen, because they're still going to be very young, I mm-hmm. think these are the guys that are going to be traded away with picks to go fetch a veteran, uh, veteran forward who's who's dominant, who's still dominant, or, or not even a veteran force, but like again, just just a key player to go compete in the playoffs. And and I have mm-hmm. no problem with that. I am I'm going to be honest in saying like I hope Baron, I hope Baron. I hope Harris and I hope Kovacevic end up being players that get in the future. Yes, I guess assets in the future. I could probably yeah. see that happening. Now, I, I could maybe also see Kovacevic being either the seventh, seventh? defenseman. Yeah. Okay. But then again, it all depends what Adam Engstrom does when he comes from Sweden next year. Yeah. That's no, another no, that's that's a, <laughs> that's another guy that <laughs> That that was more like that sounded more like Finnish, but anyways, no. Yeah, that was closer I, to the. I, I I I don't know. I don't know the, any of the Scandinavian accents, but I I again, you're gonna have to look at. You have to keep an eye on Adam Engstrom. You, eventually, one day, one day, you're gonna have to keep an eye on. I I'm gonna go get his name, but the Russian defenseman right now that's turning heads in the uh, in the KHL that got drafted this year. The same, the same draft of uh, of uh, Reinbacker. Bo- here, go. I have it right here. Bogdan Konyushkov, a right-handed defenseman. Okay, he's twenty years old, and he's already got twenty points in forty games in the KHL. Last season, he had twenty-five points in sixty-four. Granted, four goals, and European leagues are way different. I get it. Some of them are a lot tougher than we think. I'm just saying, like, there's a surplus of defensemen that the Canadians could use as trade bait too, like you said, acquire pieces that could help with this rebuild or just add another missing piece here or there to either bring toughness or something. Maybe maybe not exactly a veteran in his 30s, but someone in his mid to late 20s that's still got a bit of mileage in him. A little bit more like when Josh Anderson came here, but, but it could be something along the lines. Who knows? But right now, I know I I, I want to see Arbor Jacki back in the lineup ASAP. Yeah. But that's just my thing. Like I'm trying to look at it in a, in in an asset management way. And like he even told reporters, so he's like, they told me why, and it made and it does make sense mm-hmm. as to how they want me to develop and all that. So like, well, I, he didn't say those exact words, but it's definitely, I think it's a mixture of a of a of a, condi- a conditional stint and a work on his defensive game slash his emotions. Yeah. I, I I don't see why it would be. And and I guarantee I'm not in the organization. I don't know shit, but my, my head, my heart, my gut feel says beyond the shadow of a doubt in comparison with other players like Yoel Armia. And, and for example, Yoel Armia should not have been an easy send down. But I'm telling mm. you, it was probably harder for this Montreal Canadiens group to send down Arbor Jack Eye than it was to send down Yoel Armia. And I probably. guarantee you the probably. picture was painted perfectly so that Jack Eye understood this. You are so important to this organization. Yep. You're not going anywhere. We value you. We need you to do this, this, and this so that you can come back even better. And I think so too. And 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 again, 
maybe the same type of thing is he's forward versus defenseman, but I love going back to that example. Second time we mentioned him this episode, Max Pacioretty. Max Pacioretty, <laughs> different because I don't see Jack Eye saying this. I think Jack Eye would have preferred being up. Mm -hmm. But it is, the logic is there. When Pacioretty was like, If you're not going to play I'm me, send me up. down. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not going to play me, like send me down, let me develop. And, and look, when he finally came back up, he came back up to stay. And yeah. that was it. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think exactly, our, it's not exactly the same. No, but, no, but no, but I get what you're saying. I think Jack I is is humble enough to not go down that route. But I I think I th I think it could have shattered or hurt his ego a little bit. And I think it's normal. You know, you're 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 uh, you're you become an ins an inspiration to a lot of the kids. Like you're not drafted at all. You're you crack you crack the NHL lineup, not ever getting drafted. Everything was oh everybody was always against you, saying you probably weren't good enough. Then you 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 go you you beat the shit out of Zach Cashin. You end his NHL career practically. Then you get the title of like the sheriff. You do the fucking the 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 the, the burger commercial, mm -hmm. like you know what I mean. And then all of a sudden you lose all of that by getting sent down to the minors. Not that he lost it. I don't think he lost it, but you know you well, only man. really keep that. Dude, you fucking put Ryan Reeves through the through the fucking goalie net, okay? <laughs> On the in the first game of the oh. season, you, you know what I mean? Like, so there had to have been it. It did for sure hurt him. I, I I don't know if I don't. I'm not saying he's a he he's a very uh, egotistical person. I, I I don't think he is. I think he's a very humble person. But you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure somewhere deep down inside, he's like, fuck, like, what did I do wrong? Like, oh, why? Why am I getting set down? But then again, as long as he shows good attitude, he puts in the work, he he shows up to work every day, he shows up to play. And if he does the same thing in the minors, just, you know what, plays a simple defensive game, but looks after his teammates as well without having to drop the gloves. He, I, it won't it won't be long until we see Jack I again with the Canadians.